Hello and welcome to another video from the Voyager Steam Lab classroom. Um, I'm Trevor Lewis. Uh, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be focus on, focusing on portraiture. Uh, this is a project where my students will build this canvas frame in wood and stretch the canvas. But instead of stretching a canvas and just painting it white and using it for a painting project later, we're going to do something a little different today. We're going to combine up what we did before by doing printmaking on paper and we're going to do a print of a portrait on the canvas directly and we're going to paint the rest of the background so that we can stretch it. So this black here is all printmaking ink and what we did was we used the canvas loose and we ran it through a printing press. Um, we found that we needed to back up the canvas with some paper because uh, the ink bled through the canvas a bit. And then we stretched the canvas on our canvas frame that we built in the wood shop and then we painted the background and that helped stretch the canvas and keep it tight. So that's the, the full project. Today we're going to focus on how did we get this plate. So this is very similar to what we've done in the past. Um, I'm going to focus more on some advanced tracing techniques in Inkscape that allow us to do uh, more interesting or artistic choices when it comes to how to do this. I'm also going to focus on how to get this picture taken and how to get it into the computer. So let's get started. So first thing is um, portraiture. So if you are going to try and make your portrait a little bit more artistic and not just a selfie um, where you're looking directly in the camera and saying cheese and maybe throwing up bunny ears, um, what I recommend is try keeping most of, most of your face in the frame. Mostly the full frame is your face. Try looking off to a, the side and thinking about something. If you do that, you can create, a, it's a really quick, easy hack to getting a, an interesting portrait. Um, the other thing I would like to emphasize is lighting. This, this image that I used here did not have the best lighting. Um, the best lighting is a lot of soft, diffuse light when you're taking portraiture, especially when we're going to be doing these traces because we want to have nice gradual tones with no strange shadows because sometimes the shadows can cause the nose to be a little bit more impressionistic or create a shadow under a lip that makes the lip look fuller than it really is. These types of things um, can really alter the, the makeup of the image. So what we're going to do is we're going to pose near a window um, or it, you can even go outside but not in direct sun. Uh, these are going to give you a lot of light and that's going to make your portraits better. So to get your portraits off your phone, here's what you're going to do. So you have a couple of options. The one that I recommend the most is using the Google Drive app. So my students have access to the Google Drive app on right on their web page. They can click here and log in with their with their student account. Um, you can do that on your phone. If you have an Android phone, it might be a little complicated because it says that it's going to let the school take over your phone and all sorts of scary messages. Um, you can also use a personal Gmail account um, or Google account to move your files. It's like a big flash drive that's up on the cloud. So once you have that, that app and on your phone, if you have data or if you're on Wi-Fi, you can just uh, select the photo and say, send it to my Google Drive. That's what I recommend and that's what I'm going to show today. The other option, if you don't want to use your data or if you don't want to install that app on your phone, is to have a cord and plug into the computer. So if you plug your phone into a computer using a USB cord, uh, you have to have the right cord for your, your, the connector on your phone. And then uh, usually your phone will say something like, do you want to trust this computer, which allows them access to your files. And you'll have to say yes. And then you'll have to go in and look in your file explorer like it's a flash drive and you're looking for a folder called DCIM which holds all your photos. Inside that folder, there's gonna be a, a, maybe some subfolders and there's gonna be all your photos. So it can be a little awkward trying to find your photo. Sometimes it helps to know what the name of the photo is um, because you can find it without looking at every single preview of every single photo on your phone, which is not always appropriate to do at school or on the internet. Here, so here I'll show you what I did is I went to my drive and I sent my photo and since I just did it, it's right here and so I can click on it. Um, this is the photo I just took. Let's double click actually. You can see I'm looking off to the side. You can see that I've got a full face. You can see that my lighting is okay. Uh, not great. I didn't go outside. Um, now I have a couple options here. Now that I have this photo, depending on what kind of photo it is, you can see this one's a JPEG. That's going to that's gonna play nicely with Inkscape so I can just press the download button and since I'm in Chrome it's going to automatically go to my downloads folder. Um, that's one option, although you can see that's a rather large file. 
The other option, especially if you have like a really high resolution photo, sometimes the file formats like our HEIC or some things like that that don't play well with uh, apps on computers. So what you can do then is you can use the snipping tool. So you can just type here in Windows and type snip and choose a snipping tool. The snipping tool, you can see I already did it. You can choose a new thing and draw a box around it. it takes a picture, makes a copy. You can go into Inkscape and you can paste it. So I've already had videos about how to trace things in Inkscape. So the basics of it are, um, if it's a scan, you have to ungroup it a bunch, but since this is just a photo, I can do trace bitmap. Uh, if I use the, the regular brightness cutoff, what will happen is it will set a threshold and everything darker than that threshold will come. And you can see mine's actually looking okay. Um, not everyone has a beard, so it might not work out as well, quite so well for everyone um, if you don't have a dark beard. Uh, so let me show you another way. So this is more advanced scanning. So down here, we have multiple scans. So the way this works is we can take this image and instead of just saying yes, I want it in my scan and no, I don't want it. And it's very black and white. We can break it down into colors or grays or brightness steps. I use colors and grays more often. So grays breaks it into shades of gray. You can see it's set to eight shades of gray. Let's hit update and see what that looks like. You see, it looks a lot more like my photo and maybe it's hard to understand, but each one of these shades of gray is a separate object. Um, the other thing I want to point out is stack scans. The default for stack scans is checked. Um, if you check stack scans, what will happen is it will, instead of putting the background as only the parts that you can see, it will make the background a full rectangle and it'll stack these other colors on top of it. So let's uncheck stack scans for right now. And I'm going to use colors, not grays. And I'm going to hit update. You can see what that looks like. I'm going to hit OK. When you're doing this for this project, this number of scans tells me how many gradations, how many different colors to look for. If you change this number, if you change this check, if you change from colors to grays, you're going to get different scans. And what I recommend is just trying them out. So there's my first set. Let's have a look at these scans. I'm going to keep this in case they don't work out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup these because there's eight different scans here and they're all grouped together. So I'm going to choose ungroup. We chose not to stack scans. So that means this blue here is all only just these little patches of blue that are standing out. I'm going to scroll back by holding control and scrolling the mouse so I can see what I'm doing. See those little patches of blue don't really add to my, my image. So let's get those out of the way. And I don't really like that scan. You can see I'm just pulling off colors and I'm looking at them and I'm like, well, that one's pretty artsy. Maybe that one's interesting. I don't know. What about this one? Mm, I don't know. That doesn't really look like anything. And you can see, oh, I like these ones. Let's see. Let's, let's move one more though. See that one? That one's kind of interesting. But I kind of like these two together. If I take them apart, you can see I don't really like either of them on their own. They're a little weird on their own. So I'm going to control Z, go back one step. And I'm going to select both at the same time. And then I can go up to path and union them back together. Make sure that you're not just aligning by eye, but they're exactly where they were. Otherwise, you have a little line in between them. But I could use that for my portrait. Um, you don't really have to worry about weirdness in the background because you can paint right over that ink. Um, but, you know, maybe maybe this is not exactly what I want. So let's try it without uh, with stacking the scans in place and see what happens. So I'm just going to select and delete these, delete, delete, delete. And I'll try it with, with uh, stack scans turned on. So again, I'm going to right click, trace bitmap. This time I'm going to just check stack scans. That's the only change I made, although I could change the number of scans too. I would make one change at a time and test them out. That's what I would do. That's how you iterate to make your things better. Let's ungroup. So now watch, the last time I pulled the blue out, I just had this little rectangle and this little sliver. but now when I pull the blue out, oops, I missed it. I get the whole background because it's just behind everything. Oh, I already like this one better than the other ones that I had. And you can see actually I have a lot of different options here. Several of these are good. So for this particular image, stack scans worked better. Although you can see this one and this one are kind of useless. Those ones that are pretty blank. Let's get rid of the useless ones. Don't like this one either. Delete. And then I can focus on these ones and, and decide what sort of image I want. How much ink do I want on my canvas? Do I want a lot of ink on my canvas? Do I want very little ink on my canvas? Or maybe somewhere in the middle? I kind of like this middle one. 
Um, if you don't like the color, you can always change the color by clicking on the color bar down here to sort of preview. If I'm going to do black ink on my canvas, I might do that to get a little preview. So that's pretty much it because everything else is something that you should already have known from our printmaking video. So I'm going to go through the printmaking video um, real quick here and you can go watch the full printmaking video if you want more. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change a few things. If this really starts to bother me, I'm like, I really don't want to cover up that much ink. I can double click. I can select the parts I don't want. I can press delete. Switch back to regular select mode. Right now, my image is 134 millimeters by 171 millimeters. So what I would encourage you to do if you're my student is I would encourage you to measure your canvas in millimeters. I, you need your image to be probably want to be smaller unless you want it to wrap around the edges. You want it to be smaller. You can also use this sheet of paper here. This is a regular letter size sheet of paper as reference. So if I press lock here, I can lock this and let's say this is too small. It looks a little small to me. Maybe I know I want my height to be um, it, it, my canvas. Maybe in my canvas, let's say I built a 400 millimeter tall canvas. Well, I might want to set this not all the way to 400. Maybe I'm going to go 350 and leave some background for me to paint. You can see it's slightly bigger than my sheet of paper. Now, one dimension is not enough to check here because what if I made my canvas narrow, right? Then I would have to make some choices about which part of this face to put on there, although you can always make those artistic choices. So I might want to check to make sure my width is okay too. So here's what I've got. Now, in order to get this engraved, in our lab, we have, um, we have color settings that help us determine what, um, what is the the power setting and the mode on our laser. So uh, let me write this down for you. I'm going to switch to my, my favorite font here and um, we'll type this out. So on our laser, it, it's all about stroke color. Oops, did I? Let's try again. I know, so embarrassing. All right, stroke color. Stroke color sets the power. So let's let's write this out. So black stroke means we're going to engrave that on wood. Blue stroke means we can cut through wood. Um, and we use red stroke for um, not cutting all the way through wood. This, this is for cutting t-shirt transfer, but it also does a pretty good job of adding a score line on wood if you're interested in those things. So those are the only colors that I have set at our shop. Um, every laser is different and every way of setting it is different, but it's really helpful to have the student in Inkscape set these things right now so that when we, when we send it to the laser, I don't have to set each one for each student. And also it's really hard if I have to set each and an individual one of these little lines to a black stroke. Right now it doesn't have a black stroke. I can tell because when I select it, it says stroke unset. If I hold shift and click on the color bar, it will set the stroke. So now it's got a red stroke. You can see it's red there. You can see it's red there. You can see it's very thin 0.5 millimeters. Um, the stroke width matters on some lasers. It does not matter on ours. I'm going to set it to black because I want this area to actually not engrave. So I'm still in engrave mode, but I want this to not engrave because I'm going to put ink on that part. So to switch it so that the white part engraves and the black part does not, I'm going to draw a box around it like this. You can see it looks like I'm erasing everything, but the fill does not matter for the laser. So let's set the fill to none so I can see still. My stroke is still set to black. So now when I hit this line, it'll start engraving. And when I hit these lines, it will stop engraving. So this will be left and that will transfer into ink. So there's my one line. I need one more line. Um, so I can uh, just draw another rectangle. I'm gonna draw this one on the inside or you can see it actually snapped for me. It snapped right to the other line. Um, that's okay. You could also make it slightly smaller because I want my engraving to go all the way to the edge. I might need to zoom in a little bit more here because it's having a hard time making my rectangle only slightly smaller. It keeps snapping. You can also turn the snap off, but I'm not going to, I like to keep it on, so I'm not going to do that right now. So now I got a line on the inside. I'm going to set this inside line to blue because what I do is I put in a poplar plywood from Lowe's. Five millimeter revolution ply, that's what we get up in this area. Um, it engraves very nicely and is really cheap. It's a lot more, it's a lot cheaper than Baltic Birch, uh, which is the laserable plywood of choice. And since this is a, 
a plate and we run it through the press and it gets all bent up and we want it to be cheap and disposable, I use that. So I put this on the inside because that will cut there. So the engraving will go all the way to here and it'll cut there. So this area will all be engraved. And so this area will stick up and you might end up with a little bit of ghosting out here, but that's okay because we're gonna paint that part anyway. So this is ready to go to the laser. There's only one more thing I wanna do. So this is my face. Um, my face looks like this. My face in the mirror, however, uh, will look like what it is if I print this because it'll flip over. So if I want it to look like me and not like what I look like in the mirror, I got to select everything that I want to flip and I'm going to press flip. So now I'm ready to go. So I'm going to save this twice. I always save everything twice because if I ever want to make a change to this, um, I'm going to need to be able to open the Inkscape SVG. Um, the way our, our structure works, I want to make sure I'm saving in documents, not to some random folder that I'm not going to be able to find later. Inkscape doesn't really like the way our network is set up, so you have to make sure you're in the documents folder. I'm going to save this as portrait, Inkscape SVG. That is an editable file. Our laser will not read this file. So I need to save it again, and this is the one that I was going to turn in. I need to save it as a DXF file. It's, I'm going to use the same name so that I don't get confused. You can see it's set to millimeters as my base unit. That's really important because our laser speaks millimeters. And if I send something else, the size will change. I'm going to hit save on that. And that's the one that's going to go to the laser. And once I've got it printed, I am going to choose a color palette. You can see we have some grays and some blacks in here, but we stuck to a warm palette. I recommend sticking to a warm or cool palette if you want to make a good impression and not think too hard about the color theory. Um, you can paint the background or not. You can see we didn't paint, we chose not to paint this part. We chose not to paint back here. We chose not to paint over here. We chose to leave this border. That border would have, is what happened when you put the blue line outside the black line. So you got to be a little bit careful unless you want a border. So this is what your finished product is going to look like. Um, keep creating things. Uh, keep, keep trying out things on the laser and using Inkscape and I'll see you next time.